What's going on beautiful people? Today I'm gonna to be building one of my best ecosystems yet. I'm gonna to put together all the knowledge I've learned and put it all into this one four foot tank here. So far in the studio, I've got this one here as an ecosystem tank. What do I mean by that ecosystem tank? So basically I define it as a tank you basically do nothing to apart from top up the water and feed the fish. So it's not a closed ecosystem because that would be one that bred like tiny things and food for the fish. But don't get me wrong, without me feeding the tanks, they could still survive on their own for a long time. Here's another one that I did quite recently as well, doing really well. These are some real gorgeous enders that we've got in here and they're actually breeding, there's a baby. There we go, there's babies in there. And here's another good example, although very dark at the moment for my better fish. The duckweed has taken over on the surface again, but yeah, running with no filter. Been running for a very long time, this one now, and doing perfect. Now, I'm a pretty lazy fish keeper. I'm a pretty lazy tank setter upper. I like to set it up in a way that means I do minimal to it, apart from trimming plants and topping up water. I just think it's the absolute best way to enjoy a tank. And once you get the little start parts sorted and locked in, it's so easy after that. And that is why I'm able to run all the tanks I've got in this fish room pretty much on my own. My wife comes in every now and again, does a bit of glass scraping, that kind of thing. But all in all, it just looks after itself because of the way I set them up. Now, even the tanks with a filter, which don't get me wrong, does make everything so much easier. They are still pretty much ecosystem tanks. If the filter stopped running, we had a power cut, it wouldn't matter for like a week. I've got great news, guys. Today's video is sponsored by API and Aquarian. So we've got my absolute staples here, root tabs, every single system, the substrate. I just set it up with those. They look so, look, look, look. <laughs> Leaf Zone is the only fertilizer I've used and have used for the past pff, four years now, something like that. Quick start every setup. Don't get fish losses on startup at all. It's such, such good stuff. And Aqua Essential is perfect for just making sure your tap water is completely safe. And then you should have a test kit on hand in case there's any issues. You need to know why there's an issue and this will sort that. Food wise, we I use that. These are unopened obviously because I've got my opened ones here. So I was trying to keep it all sort of presentable <laughs> but I use I use uh, the flake everywhere all the time and then you've got your sinking pellets and algae wafers to make sure that your corys and your sort of sucker fish any kind of sucker fish even the corys actually and some of the other fish they all like the algae wafers too so we're all covered all good and again as you can see the fish crazy healthy <laughs> they're waiting for me to feed them now no not yet basically we do a video once a month that's sponsored by these companies absolutely brilliant been with them a long time you guys have seen them a lot as well and you've seen the results that we get in our tanks now it's thanks to these companies that i'm able to run all of this so big shout out to them i'm going to be using various products throughout the video we're going to more details as they're needed but yeah basically i use all of this stuff all the time every setup i'll use all of these and these are the three main things i use food wise for the fish as well which look great. So yeah, a big shout out to API and Aquarian for sponsoring today's video. Back to the show. So I recently went on holiday with the family for seven days and everyone was saying to me, who's gonna feed the fish? What, what, you know, what? This filter's making a racket, it's really annoying me, hang on. Yeah, who's gonna feed the fish? And I was like, it's absolutely fine. There's enough like sort of breaking down vegetable matter and microorganisms in the water column for them to be absolutely fine for at least a week. I'm not saying don't feed your fish for a week, by the way, not at all, but I've got established long-term aquariums now. Well, long-term for me anyway, like, you know, after three months of a tank is fully dialed in, I think anyway, in terms of like its ecosystem. Now I know quite a lot of you won't agree with that, but I'm just saying what I've experienced. And for me, three months, like we're right there. For instance, this rainbow fish tank is only three months old. And uh, yeah, I've had to trim it back so many times. If the plants are growing that well, it just means everything is working in unison. And uh, again, it needs another trim back because the space for the fish has been taken up. They can still get round and go round. They hover there when I'm here because they want me to feed them, but they, they can go everywhere, but it does need another trim back. But I'll be using some of these plants in the new setup in that tank. Now, one of the most important parts in any ecosystem is that substrate layer. Now, important doesn't mean it has to be complicated. I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I can't do this, there's too much going on. It's very, very simple. Just get anything down to start with. You can get pea gravel, go to your garden center if you're looking for really cheap stuff that doesn't have to look good, and you can stick that down first. So what I've got here are some buckets of stuff that I've used before in other setups. I just thought, well, they don't look pretty, so just chuck them all together. This one's basically just sand and gravel. 
This one's sand, some gravel, and a little bit of aqua soil as well. That's gonna help with some nutrients, but not completely essential. This one's much coarser gravel, but I put it in these bags. That's a pair of old tights. This is a filter media bag or something like that, actually. It's probably something for a laundry bag to put those cleaning things. I don't know. But yeah, we've got loads of gravel and sand in those as well. So we can use all of this to build height in the back of the aquarium, but also it's where bacteria will colonize. And that is the key to the success with no filter. So as many will know, but, but not everyone, every surface in an aquarium will actually have beneficial bacteria on it. Now, most people's tanks are quite sort of simple. There's not really a lot going on, so there's not a huge amount of beneficial bacteria, apart from in the filter media. Well, if we've not got a filter, we need somewhere else for that bacteria to colonize. And that is where all of this stuff comes in. We want lots of stuff in the aquarium. So there's an initial layer, basically gravels. That one's got a little bit of aqua soil in, just because I had it free. And on top of that now, we can get the buckets of gravel and sand just to build it up even higher. We want height at the back, it just looks better. Oh, I should probably explain as well. Yeah, we've got a four foot by two foot by two foot tank. I'll put the dimensions up on the screen here. And we're also using the Fluval Plant Free 0.0, is it, LED light? Um, I built these little bracket bits as well to raise it up, because I just, I don't like it when it's sat right in the tank. I feel like the light's too focused in one spot and too intense to be honest. I know you can dim it, but still. This way I can lift it up higher, it covers the whole area, and it'll, be just, it'll just be best like this, for me anyway. I guess not everyone has a, a rimless tank, so not everyone will want to raise it up, but it works well for what we need it for. So we have got some great height there. Let me just come to the side if we can see, there we go. As a start, this isn't gonna be nutrients, this isn't gonna be decorative. This is purely here just for height and the bacterial colonization. So on top of this, we need to lay all of our nutrients. I've got a method that works. It works so well in this one and I'm gonna do it again. On top of it now, we put aquatic compost. Ugh. Yeah, this is the aquatic compost. Now it's basically like normal compost, but they float all the organics off and whatever stays down, that's what we're gonna be using. Now you should be able to get this from any sort of pond shop, garden centers that have ponds. Anywhere that sells pond equipment will have this because you put it in the little baskets and put lilies in it and, and you know, um, I think they call a lot of them as well, oxygenating plants and things like that. But yeah, it's really, really cheap and it works so well. Oh yeah, some of you who follow the channel might have noticed this here. I have started Timmy's new tank. As you can see, well, it looks like liquid poo at the moment, but <laughs> it's not, because you're viewed round here, look. From this view, oh, it's gonna be so cool. And what we wanna do is lay down about an inch over everything. I'm even gonna put it in the foreground, but I'm gonna scrape it back a bit so you can't see it, because it'll look a bit neater then. So that's our baseline nutrients and substrate system sorted. Now we really wanna boost this up now and that is where the first product from API comes in. I've used it on every single tank I've created for four years now and they all work out so good. And I am talking about, of course, the root tabs. That's got, no, that's not enough. I'm gonna need a whole pack for this four foot tank. But what I like to do at this stage, because I can, is take them all out, grind them up into a powder and sprinkle it over everything. There we go, look, fine powder. They grind up nice and easy as well. Sprinkle that over.
There we go, look, a, a roughly even spread. Don't need to worry too much. The roots will always find the most nutrient dense places anyway, and they'll just draw from that. But we need to cap all of this down now. We need a good layer of fine to medium sand grading, just covering the whole lot. Again, this will not be my final look. Yes, yeah, so I've got this sand. This is the sand I'm gonna be using. So I've got that. I've got a mixture of a few things. This is some recycled stuff. It's a little bit grubby, but it's not too bad. Some in that one and some in that one as well. But the decorative layer I'm gonna use is this. Look at me getting fancy. ADA, I mean, I didn't get it because it's ADA. I got it because I really like the look of the different colors and the grains. This will be like more of the foreground sort of area. It won't be, there's not enough, obviously there's not enough in this bag to go all the way to the back, but you don't need it to anyway because the plants and the hardscape are gonna be there. But it's the capping layer that needs to go in first. So that is everything capped quite nicely. Now the foreground, uh, you could leave it like that and you can sort of watch out merges and maybe enjoy that. I've done it in the past, it can get quite messy. So to be honest, I'd rather just take a flat tool, pull it away a little, little bit, and then we could put the depth of uh, sand or gravel in that area. I think it's just gonna give a neater finish for this one. Oh, I'm loving that. That actually looks better. The ADA stuff on top looks much better than it did in the bag, to be honest, underneath the lighting. I actually cut down the uh, height of the foreground a little bit. It was probably about double that. I thought it was a little bit too blocky, but that's, that's just right. We can plant into that, um, not right at the front there, just a little bit further back, but everything will creep anyway. So yeah, that is the substrate system done. Now I wanna make sure that everyone wanting to give this a go is not put off by thinking that was more complicated than it needs to be. There's just coarser gravel at the bottom. There's a nutrient layer on top, which is the compost and the uh, root tabs from API. And then there's a capping layer of sand and a little bit of decorative sand on top of that. that that's it really. You can all do this if you wanna have a go. Please do, just have a go. It's so worth it, especially when everything just starts clicking, as you will see. Right, now the real fun bit can start, the actual designing, the hardscape. That bit's quite boring, but necessary. And now we can start doing our, putting our own sort of design into it, I guess. Everyone's is gonna be different, but just have a go, fiddle around. And the good thing about me having this four foot tank is that I can use all my big pieces of wood. I've got two there, I've got some up there, I've got some there. That piece is an absolute unit, but I think that would be for like hardscape only. It's gonna take up too much space. And the reason I say that is because ecosystem tanks like this one here, they need a lot of plant room. So I've got a few pieces of bogwood in here and a couple of rocks, and the rest is just all plants. And that is why it flourishes so well without having a filter because the plants are just making all of the oxygen we need. They're taking in nutrients, the waste from the fish. I mean, this is quite a decently stocked tank and still so good. I've got to be honest though, I'm really liking this piece here at the moment. I think I should start with that. Always start with your biggest pieces. Oh, I mean, that's pretty impactful. We've kind of got a diplodocus kind of thing going on there. I'm going to say it before you, you lot do. In the comments, people always see shapes or pictures or faces or animals or whatever in the hardscape that I do. I guess it's normal, isn't it, really, for humans to pick out on that. But if we're going to do a swoop up, I feel like we need to swoop down, like maybe like there to there. I think that'll work quite well. I've got to look for the right piece now. <laughs> I think I nailed it straight away. Look at that arch. And it, it, it sort of, it just works, doesn't it? I'm gonna go with that. So that's gonna be my main thing. Look, every now and again you get lucky and stuff just works. I mean, obviously I'm at a massive advantage because I've got like a whole wood store with me. So what you would need to do is go to the shop, look for those pieces, set them up, you know, on the floor, roughly the size of your tank, and just have a play with it there. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do it right in the tank, but it is kind of the same thing. Now what's great about this particular look is that there's still loads of spaces to plant. So I've left massive gaps. We wanna put rocks in as well, especially to hold these pieces of wood down, but I don't wanna take up too much space. Uh, 
There we go, look, I flipped that actually from what you just saw and it slots right in better and doesn't take away from the shape of the wood then and we've still got that arch that comes all the way around. So that'll actually be enough to hold that piece of wood down easy. We need something for that side. I might have to ram it in some of these gaps in the side. Alternatively, you can glue to, to the rocks as well, but I kind of want to avoid it if I can. If I know that I've got it locked at this point, it's all good. There we go. So you can see the time lapse there, added some additional pieces. Uh, so obviously the first two were just the main, the main sort of structure and then you build around it. I've built around it with rocks. This one's pretty ugly, I'm not gonna lie, but we're not gonna see that. I've actually got plans for that being the main area focal point of the, the fern. So setups like this tend to have a nice fern section and that one there is where it will be. I've also placed a big rock there, which is locking down that whole section and a, a slightly big, sort of medium size is the word, uh, rock there just to lock down all that as well. If you look at the back there, see that big curve? That also sort of brings down into the foreground with that piece as well. So that's why that piece is randomly like that. It just follows that line and these ones follow that. Like you don't have to follow any lines if you don't want to, but sometimes it just does work really well. Like that arch goes all the way now to the back there. This one swoops all the way around to the foreground. Then you've got that nice big curve as well. I don't know what I'm talking about, to be honest. I mean, it sounds a lot more fancy than it is. <laughs> Just keep putting the stuff in until you think it looks cool. If you think it looks cool, that's enough. But we are now ready to bring this thing to life. Let's plant it up. I've got a ton of plants to go in and a load of stems that I can trim from all my other tanks as well. So down here in a little section that's been really neatly organized by my wife, I've got loads of boosts there. We've got Lobelia cardinalis dwarf. We've got some big Java fern Windelof in there. And then over this side, we've got uh, awesome Liliotsis brasiliensis. We've got loads and loads of different kinds of crypts as well. They're gonna look so good. Now, obviously it's not gonna be as easy for you guys to just start chucking in a ton of plants like me straight away. Obviously everyone's got different budgets. This is my business, so I've always got plants available. Now, what I would suggest you do is put back about 50 pound or $60, about that much get yourself a few crypts and get loads and loads of stem plants. Just start with tons of stem plants. You can't really go wrong then. And because they will grow, you can trim them, replant them. You get even more. I don't know where I'm going. But yeah, let's just start planting these all up. I'm gonna use the ferns first because I wanna create like a little section for those. In that main focal point area there, probably a little bit on that one as well. Right, that's all the plants prepped. That took a while, so we've got our ferns here. We've got more sort of foreground, midground plants here. I've got all the crypts up here. There's actually more than it looks like. What have we got? 31 pots in total. Now, I suggest that you would probably be able to use half of that. So it's, you know, it's gonna be an investment, but it's a good investment. I've also down here got a load of stems that I've trimmed off all my other plants. So it really is an investment because these are all from and other, other tanks that I've trimmed out of and they're just doing really well. I've just got them in a little bit of water, sunlight comes in, that's it. But anyway, let's get planting. So that is all of the crypts in, quite sort of random I did it, but we've got the spiralis, which gets quite tall. We've got a couple there. We've got one just peeking over the top, that'll get nice and tall. We've got another one this side to fill in that area. But the rest is pretty random. I've kept the short stuff obviously in the foreground, the mid ground's more sort of taller ones. It's a complete mix, but that actually looks so good when it grows in. Right, next we can put some foreground plants in the Liliopsis brasiliensis.
So that's Crips foreground area done. I've sprayed it down as well because it's starting to dry out. It's really, really hot here, hence the, the vest I'm wearing in this video. Anyway, so now I want to put in the ferns and really get those focal points going over those rocks. Okay, this is awesome. We're ready to fill up. I'm gonna put my stem plants in afterwards. That's what I always like to do, because if I put them in now, I can't see what height they're at, where they're sitting, how good they look. But when you put them in water, they're already sort of upright how they're gonna be. I just think it looks so much better and you can take your time a bit more and just get it right. So the tank is filled up, but we are not done yet. Not by a long shot. Now you could stop there if you wanted a low maintenance tank, you could do. You'd need to put a filter in, in my opinion, keep it on the lighting, do a lot more water changes because none of these plants that we've got in here at the moment are fast growing and fast growing plants are the absolute key to an ecosystem that hasn't got a, fil a filter in. So I'm just gonna get them in now, start placing them in the background area and poking through lots of different colored stems. Should look amazing and I can show you what I've done after. There we go guys, we're fully planted. That looks so good, right? I mean, it's misty, because obviously I've been stirring up all that substrate, putting all the plants in. But what's quite interesting is that the main impact here, the majority of the plants you'll see in the stem plants, for instance, in the background, they are all harvested from other tanks, which means they were all free to me. Well, kind of, I mean, obviously I bought the initial plants, but not many, not a huge amount. And it, I just keep doing this bunching. Every time I break off some, I bunch them and put them in another tank. And as a result, we've just got so many just dotted around everywhere. Now I'm gonna quickly stick in a little external, uh, sorry, no, an in internal filter, just like a little, little power heady type one just here, just to move the water around and get that clear. And I'm also gonna be adding the API AccuClear. This stuff is like magic. Basically, it binds all the sort of larger particles. So that's what you're seeing in the dust there, it's large particles. It binds them together, and then it just lets them either sink or if you've got a power head like we're gonna put in there now, like a filter power head, it'll just take all that out and get it caught in the fine filter floss. So we'll do that now, and then it means we'll be able to go and get our fish. And then in goes the API AccuClear. You really don't need a lot of this, and that's why it's such a small bottle, to be honest, because even in this size tank, I only need this much. Done. And some of you might be thinking, well, I'm happy just to have this little filter in. And to be honest, that would make it way easier to get the whole system settled. So if you want to do that, you can. Just a nice little internal filter. This is nothing special. What, what is it? It's 1,000 litres an hour. It's just, it's just pushing water around. And to be honest, the tanks do settle faster when you have something pushing the water around. I just like the idea of having nothing in the tank, though. So that's why I'm doing this whole ecosystem thing with the plants working for you. Right, it's so now the next day. The tank did actually go crystal clear before I left the studio yesterday. You can probably hear water on. That's Kate's in with me. Say hi, Kate. But I'm coming this morning and it's a little bit murky. Now this will just be the wood releasing some tannins from the water. So a quick water change down and up again and we'll be good to go and get the fish. So the tank is now filled up exactly where we want it to be. The filter has been removed. I also stuck in a little bit more of the AccuClear just to really, really get it crystal and we're there. It's like gin. Look at that look completely crystal clear. Now I have actually bought something else that I might want to put behind it. I'm not sure yet, I'm going to give it a go. So I've bought this big long sort of light that you can put inside the aquarium, but I'm going to put it behind it as like an up lighter in the back and you can change it to whatever sort of color you want as well. So it might be cool, it might not work. I'm going to give it a go anyway. We've got a few colors we can play with. That's a blue. I think that looks pretty cool to be honest. The green, the green looks pretty cool as well, actually. That does give a, a much more natural vibe. Hopefully it's coming out on, on the camera, but uh, yeah, you can see how it's reflecting off of everything. Let's give red a go because why not? That looks ridiculous. Bit of purple, silly again. No, I'm gonna go with that green. I think either that one, or, no. That green there, I think that works beautifully because it doesn't detract from the plants then, but you still got that sort of 
colour to the background. Yeah, really like that. I'll leave a uh, I'll leave a link if you're interested in getting that strip. It comes in all the different sizes as well, so well up for using that a bit more in the future. Right, anyway, that's enough faff. We're ready. We can go get the fish. Look at you with your double microphones. Yeah. I know. Oh, it's been it's been almost I, a month. I know. It's, I think it's the longest time I haven't seen you in probably three <laughs> years. <laughs> it feels weird. <laughs> Come away from it. It's so bright. Hi, Mine. Hi. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, it was like a month ago, honestly. Up until this point in the video, Matt, I've mm. not even mentioned anything about fish at all. Right. Because Matt said to me, we've got a delivery coming in, oh, just wait and see. I was just going to pick like odds and sods from around the studio, like yeah. to put them all in one. And then Matt was like, we can do better than uh, that. We can always do better than that. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's whoa. missed me. It doesn't like this light behind us. Let's go. Let's go. Anyway, let's I don't go. even know what tank it is. Oh, it's my ecosystem. So it's like it's oh, just four a four foot. foot. Yes, four I foot. remember now. I remember four now. Four foot swimming space. Okay. Sorry if I keep looking at the screen, guys. It's so bright. Like it's quite bright. Sun. Cardinals. Let's just do Card cardinals. Cardinals. <laughs> Let's just do. I can do better than that. Cardinals. I think if I do cardinals, everyone's just gonna go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's these little? What are they? Oh, they're some new fake rocks. I thought they were quite cool. Okay. Um, look, here you go. Oh, I've got plants on them though. Wow. That Really, that's really good. They're cool, aren't I'm they? I'm impressed. I'm impressed with that. That's both. That's all three of them. So yeah, like you do that in a three foot, you're done. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. Because not really everyone cool. wants to spend two hours scaping. And that's the thing, isn't it? Like when you look at that's probably forty quid's worth of rock anyway. Yeah. And you can just plop plants around it and done. No, yeah. For everyone's yeah, done. Actually, tank. I've done another one. Look. I stood that one up. Clever. See. Very clever. Simple. Nah. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Um, I don't know. It depends. No, on you've what. had time to think. You We've knew got what was tons. Coming. Did anything come in last night? What was last night? It was the new order. Yeah. So yeah. No, there's some cool stuff. So we got oh, um, there's some cool stuff down here. Shouted any puffer fish? Whoa. <laughs> yep. So they're the little no, I mean, Congo puffers. They're not going in, are they? No, 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 no. They're not going in. No, they need some food. But yeah, we had some cool stuff. Some different Congo tetras and some bits and pieces. Um, things that you could choose from. It's been a month, so like literally there is so many different things in here that yeah. I could point out to you now. I'm a little bit like confused. Well, basically, I don't want to do massive stocking, but I, I wouldn't mind a few cool things, that's all. Like it's an ecosystem. Are you thinking barbs? Are you thinking... Well, it doesn't really matter. Like I just want something that's interesting. It doesn't have to be a lot of them. It could be little mini shoals. It could be little mini... Um, okay. I don't know, like... It I'm... won't be rams because you don't like... Well, no, no not that you don't like them. I like rams. They're, they're hard work, though. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. There's so many nicer fish. the water as yeah. well. Like, yeah, no, no, no. So, these little guys are cool. Which are a... Um, they're golden barbs, aren't they? No, they're massive. slightly different. They're Nariani barbs. Okay. So they're really cool. They get the orange and the gold spots yeah, like to them. them. Like so them. they're a little they bit bigger than that, Matt. Or a little bit. Yeah, not much. Not massive. Like, remember, it is an ecosystem. Yeah, so they're not... I think they're like five, six centimetres. We got some nice copper harlequins at the top there, or lamb chop boras as people call them. Yeah. Got some wicked pencil fish. Once they get... get older, they'll get like the gold and the red tails, red tips to the tails and stuff, which are a little bit different. What are they in with? Uh, so those are wild rams. Okay. Yeah, just feeding them up at the moment because there's um yeah they just came in so they just need a little bit more food. Very young. Bit yeah. More. Yeah, this is it. They just need a little bit more grub. But yeah, they're cool. Reed tetra. They're small and nice and simple. Nice little white spots to them. So many tetras. Yeah, this is it. They're, like, there is so many different things that would work well in that tank. And we haven't even got to the nano system yet, to be honest. Oh, it's blinking hot, isn't it? Isn't it warm? Fans died. Is it? The brand new one. You got it fitted yesterday and the fans died? Yeah. I mean, that's probably good because we would have turned it off now anyway. Yeah, it overheated. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's that hot, it overheated. It, it overheated, literally. Um, but yeah, I've, oh, like so many. Green neons, perfect. No. <laughs> they don't hunt. So I did a new real basic setup. Yep. So like a more of an ADG, like open. And um, they don't hide in that. Oh. They're like, they're really like sociable. They, there's a little, uh, there's a little section they just pop into every now and again, but they're everywhere. It's okay. It's like there's no plants. We're real comfortable. No cover, nothing. Anyway, yeah, just how it is. That's interesting, isn't it? It is how it is. How oh, weird. what about a few of these beauties? No. They're females, I'm guessing. They are, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're males, they just get on. <laughs> yeah, just friendly male. <laughs> Jiminy cricket. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Yeah. This, this one in particular. 
is uh, proper nice. If it focuses, can it focus? It's, it's, it's got gotcha. you. Yeah, love those. Yeah, because then we've got like little Andrewsies pencil fish. So they're the little pencil fish. Okay, well, I think we've got to do our classic. Bit like of everything. Five of everything. Yeah? We've got some nice ember tetras in. Because I, I just want it to be one of those tanks where lots of different things going on when yeah. you look in certain areas. And uh, I think we can do that by having just lots of multiple different things. Yeah, lots of little shoals of different bits and pieces. It's going to be interesting then. Yeah, I and think And only that's a cool. few of each, like five of each. Yep. Like a, it makes more work for you though. Yeah. Well, it's all right, it's I'm not used too to it. You're, you're, that's what you do. I'm such a pain. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you've got to make up for the fact that you haven't been here for a month. Yeah, exactly. So, you've got yeah. a lot of work to do. Absolutely. I've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be cool. So maybe some rice fish, maybe some tetra. Yeah, yeah I like that. It's really heavily planted, so nice. it's literally going to be like, you're going to see them, you're going to have to go close to really yeah, yeah, appreciate. And appreciate. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Think, like, that's like the celestial perodanios and stuff. You have to get close to actually oh, yeah. appreciate their colour. Speaking of which, have uh, we? Left-hand yes, side with the, uh, with the betters. Yes, yeah. we'll have a few. We'll have a few of them as well. I love them. All right, cool. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to enjoy that then. Yeah, I'm not, because I've got to bag it all up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right, we are back, we are back. Let's get these fish acclimating. I'll turn the light off in a second as well, but they'll be fine for a sec. In fact, I'll do it now. So we'll just leave those for like 20 minutes or so, get used to this temperature and then we can release them. So it's been about 20 minutes or a little bit over actually. I can put the fish in now. Um, obviously you don't need to quarantine or anything like that. They're all from the same system anyway. So this is effectively, it becomes a quarantine tank if you like. Now I didn't get any cleanup crew. It's so brand new. There's not, there's not really gonna be anything for the cleanup crew to do yet. But what I will do, keep an eye on it. If in a few weeks time, some algae comes, stuff like that, I will add the cleanup crew. Stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed and everything because there'll be part twos, there'll be updates on this. I've got a feeling this is gonna grow into a really, really amazing tank. So uh, yeah, lots of updates to come, but let's get these fish in now. So first in are the pur purple Resporas. I mean, they don't look too purple just yet. They will color up shortly though, look at that. Little group of six, we basically went for group of six of everything because, oh look, straight away they look awesome. Oh, loving that. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. And then next up, the gold resborers, which aren't too gold again at the moment, but they will be. Go find your friends. And celestial pearl danios. Now, these might be a bit shy to start with. They might go and hide. I am expecting to, but their colors will be so, so nice in a few hours, to be honest. Next is the reeds tetra, because, you know, you've got to have a tetra, right? Oh, they're much quicker than the rest of them, as you'd expect from a tetra and a few have hidden, but the reason I went with the reeds is because I've, I've never kept them before and I, I'm quite enjoying just collecting fish at the moment, like all the different types. Daisy's rice fish going in now. All small fish, remember, I'm deliberately putting small fish in here. That way there's a small fish load and you're far more likely to get a successful start to your aquarium and not just this algae bloom in everywhere, which I don't think we're gonna get anywhere with. It looks to me like the lighting is absolutely spot on. These are the free lined pencil fish. Nice. See, a lot more chilled than the Tetra were. We've basically gone for a, um, different fish that are gonna cover all the areas of the tank, and they are actually doing that right now. We'll get up close in a minute, but look at the golds already, the gold uh, resboras and the purples. That's really starting to, the, the coloring up nicely now. And last, but certainly not least, the Ivanstoff rainbow fish, which are very jumpy. There we go, got them all. So now that the fish are in and all good, we can add some beneficial bacteria. Basically, this tank is not cycled, is it? It's, it's brand new. Obviously, some of the plants that we put in there will have beneficial bacteria on them because they've got other setups. But we do really need to kickstart everything. And to do that, we're using Quickstart. API's Quickstart is so good. It's like a cheat code. I use this all the time. Never, ever get fish losses. It needs to be combined with the, uh, hang on. I say it needs to be combined with the freshwater master test kit as well, to be honest, because when you're doing something like this, I need to put a test of water daily just to make sure there's no spikes in anything. Now, there shouldn't be in this instance because we've got so many plants, and let's be honest, it's not a high fish load, is it? But if you're a new fish keeper, I definitely suggest you get quick start at a test kit. You can't go wrong then. Well, you can, but you know, you'd <laughs> you shouldn't go wrong then. So yeah, quick start first. Always shake up your bottles because obviously stuff's been sat and it, it will just naturally just settle, won't it? So you've got to turn it up and down. 
There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're probably wondering how I filled this up. Well, it all come from my water butt, which is round here. Um, it's empty now, because obviously it's, it's all gone into the tank. But what I do is I add Aqua Essential to this when I fill it up. And basically that just makes all the water completely safe. Detoxifies any ammonia and nitrate as well if you want to add it to your tank at any point if you need to. But it removes the chlorine, chloramines and heavy metals from the tap water. So basically I've just got perfect temperature water just sat there because the room's heated, absolutely perfect. And it goes straight in, not just that tank obviously, any other tanks around the studio as well when you need to top them up, which I actually do on this one. Hi guys. And what's great is that the fish are literally already settling in. The colors are actually looking really good already. The last thing I wanna to add to the tank though is some floating plants. We don't need many, but that's gonna really, really help again with just keeping that water quality good and keeping the fish happy as well. So I have got here, look, some Amazon frog bit, really good quality stuff as well. It's growing beautifully in one of my other tanks, but that'll do really good in here. Now, obviously there's no flow in this tank. She's somewhere else. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, put, just put them anywhere, they won't move around. They'll actually eventually just get sort of stuck on some of the bits of wood we've got there, but that's absolutely fine. They're still going to be doing their job. And what happens eventually is the roots actually grow quite long and it's quite, it looks really nice actually, really natural look it gives. Fish like swimming in and out of amongst them all as well. So they're going to enjoy that and it's going to serve a really good purpose. But there's still one last thing we need to add to the tank and that is the leaf zone, the fertilizer in the water column. The reason being we need to do this straight away there's no root systems established yet. It's going to be a few weeks probably before they're, they're growing deep enough, actually less than that, it'll probably be about a week. And they're all going to be deep enough into that full substrate system we've got. So if you dose the water column now, then the plants are going to have enough just to keep them going nicely until those root systems have developed. And for this size tank, I'm going to be putting in three capfuls. One, two. Now remember, we haven't got any flow because we haven't got a filter. So I'm just flicking it around. The fish will actually move it all around. They are going to create the flow in this tank. So this is going to be one of those tanks that just gets better and better with time. I can see the plants already standing upright. They're looking perfect, to be honest. Within a couple of weeks, they're going to be hitting the surface and they're going to need trimming. And I'm really loving this new green background that's been added. I'm definitely going to do that in a few more tanks as well, I think. It just, it just sets it all off. It's like the finishing touch. It looks so good. And I'm so pleased as well with the fish. They seem to be settling in really, really fast. This is actually the next day now. And as you can see, they're all completely colored up and looking perfect. There we go, look, there's a Celestial Pearl Danio as well. If it, oh, they're so hard to film because they just move, move, move. Come to the front a little bit, yeah, so, re, oh, no, stay still. Is that guy, come on, there we go. Look at that, oh, nearly stayed still for a second there. I think Celestial Pearl Danios are some of the nicest fish. Oh, that's a good shot, well done, thank you for that. <laughs> but these gold Harlequins as well, they're chunky, chunky fish to be fair, looking so, so healthy. And then we've got the purple ones as well, really nice addition to the tank. Lots of action in that sort of top area. Now, eventually I might be adding in some quarries or something like that and a full cleanup crew, as I mentioned earlier, but not at the moment. There's, there's not really a lot going on for them to be able to clean. Maybe a couple of weeks or so. And also, I don't particularly want the quarries tearing up all this front area because these plants don't really have a massive root system or anything. So if they stir around this gravel, they will come up. So I'm just gonna leave that for a bit, but I'll, I'll definitely be adding some quarries at some point. I mean, every tank's got to have some quarries, doesn't it? But yeah, so, so pleased with how this has turned out. It's gonna be perfect as well within a few weeks. And remember, don't get disheartened by the amount of plants I've got here. You guys are not gonna have that, are you? You'd probably be able to do half of that, I reckon. That's very presumptuous of me, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like most people aren't gonna have that many, but you can start with half of that. And within a few weeks, you better trim every single stem plant and replant it. So it's not gonna take long before it's like this, but obviously, doing a video, I want it to look sort of done straight away. The main thing about it though is that the fish absolutely love it and they're just behaving perfectly.